Welcome back, fellow explorers to Project Markiraji. In this episode, we will explore the first half of an explosion of complex life on Markiraji. This explosion of life is triggered by the evolution of increasingly predatory Nugia. This threat will push their prey to adapt in order to survive. One branch of Nugia may specialize to feed on the Vayata. They may rearrange their tentacles with one on the bottom and two at the top. The lower tentacle may broaden into a shovel-like structure, which they use to scoop up Vayata. One pair of eyes may specialize to see in lower light conditions, as they will spend most of their time near the seabed. We will call these predatory Nugia the Nugapala. They hunt in warm shallow waters near the equator. They grow up to two feet long and live for up to 10 years. As these new predators evolve the Viata will need to adapt. One clade may evolve muscular fins on their sides. These fins are not for swimming, they are actually used to bury themselves in the sand. They've also evolved a more sandy coloring. These adaptations will allow them to hide from the Nugapala in plain sight. These creatures share the diet of the ancestral Viata, feeding on marine snow. We'll call these strange creatures the Sabascosta. They mainly inhabit warm waters, but can be found in cooler regions as well. They grow up to six inches and live for up to six years. In the open oceans, one clade of the Nugia has evolved a filter feeding lifestyle. Their bottom two tentacles are lined with bristles, which allow them to catch passing plankton. We will call these filter feeders the Primanti. They live for up to 18 years and grow up to 7 feet long. When they first evolved they were already larger than their ancestors, but as new predators evolve they may grow even larger using their size as a defense. One such predator is the Verarella. These Nugia descendants are closely related to the Primanti, but instead of filter feeding bristles these creatures have evolved sharp teeth. These teeth come paired with a skeleton which is made of calcium. Skeletons are common to their Primanti relatives as well. The Verarella use their sharp backwards facing teeth to kill prey and drag it into the mouth. They have a large tail fin and are capable of large bursts of speed. They live in the tropics of Markiraj's oceans with their main food sources being the Nugia and young Primanti. They grow up to 5 feet long and live for up to 14 years. Yet another clade of Nugia may respond to this new threat not by getting bigger, but getting smaller. The Kadola are a small schooling species that use safety in numbers to combat predation. They are mainly herbivorous and congregate in schools of around 500 individuals. But once every year they congregate in mass swarms of up to 10,000 individuals. It is in these swarms where they breed. As expected these swarms draw a lot of attention, so it is common to see Verarella and even Nugapala feeding amongst the swarm. The Kadola feed on the floating Atifogile, and occasionally feed on the Dufogile. These creatures can be found in all but the coldest of Markiraj's oceans. They grow up to 5 inches long and live for up to 2 years. Other Nugia may forego the open ocean entirely, instead opting for a subterranean lifestyle. The Abitantibuca are strange-looking creatures which have evolved a burrowing lifestyle spending most of their time underground. Their fins have been rearranged with six on top and six on bottom. This configuration allows them to more effectively burrow, beating their fins to push sand away. Their burrows are nothing remarkable, simply a hole which the Abitantibuca use as shelter. They never venture further than a few feet away from their burrow and at the first sign of danger they retreat underground. They have also evolved effective camouflage making it safer for them to venture outside of their burrows. While outside of their subterranean homes, these creatures feed on the Dufogile. 
they can be found in the warmer waters of Makiraji. These creatures live for up to five years and grow up to a foot long. So far we have mainly discussed Nugiya diversity, but now we turn our gaze to the sea floor where the descendants of the Vyata thrive. But first we must discuss the descendants of the Dufogile. One branch of Dufogile may evolve to become much larger with larger leaves to capture as much light as possible. These plants may reproduce by budding. Budding is an asexual form of reproduction in which the offspring of this plant stay attached to the parent plant until they are mature. Then they detach from the parent plant and fall to the sea floor to grow independently. We will call these Dufogile, the Diapergo. They grow up to 20 feet tall and inhabit the warm tropical seas near the equator. Yet another branch of Dufogile may adapt the gas sacs of the Atifogile to help them reach sunlight. Even though they are still attached to the sea floor, they use their gas sacs to raise their leaves to the surface. We will call these organisms the Dialophygro. They grow up to 30 feet tall and inhabit more temperate waters. One branch of Dufogile may take the opposite strategy. Instead of getting bigger, they may get smaller. Only their leaves will protrude above the surface. They reproduce asexually and grow in large colonies. They can be found in warm shallow seas. We will call them the Basophogile. The Atophogile may have been evolving as well. One branch of Atophogile may grow larger draping their large leaves down. Their leaves may become flat and wide. These adaptations allow them to capture more sunlight. We will call them the Pensophogile. They inhabit warm and temperate waters and grow up to 20 feet tall. Now we can discuss the Viata. The main threat to the Viata is the Nugapala. While the Sabascosta evolved to hide from their predators, one branch of Viata may evolve tough defenses. They may filter feed using their tentacles which are lined with bristles to catch passing food particles. If a predator approaches, they may retract their tentacles into their shell. One issue faced by these newly sessile creatures is reproduction. Since they can't actively seek a mate they will have a harder time reproducing. So they may release gametes in mass. This will give them a better chance of reproducing. We will call these well-defended creatures the Gascata. They grow up to 5 inches and live for up to 10 years. They inhabit warm and temperate waters. Another group of viata may become large mobile filter feeders. However, there is a problem. Most all plankton inhabit surface waters. These creatures may solve this by evolving extremely long tentacles. These tentacles would have to be extremely muscular in order to move them around. Still they may be extremely slow moving. We will call these strange creatures the Bacolta, they inhabit the warm waters of the equator. Their tentacles can grow up to 10 feet tall, and they can live for 25 years. But the Viata aren't the only creatures on the sea floor. The Abitantibuca dig their burrows in the sand and use them for protection. But some may use them for a much more sinister purpose. One branch may evolve spikes on the tips of their tentacles. They use their tentacles to drag prey into their burrows. 
This hunting strategy is very similar to the bobbit worms of Earth. We will call these hunters the Avantibuca. They grow up to one foot long and live for up to 15 years. They inhabit warm and temperate waters where there is plenty of prey. And now our exploration comes to an end. We have explored the sea floor and the open oceans. We have witnessed strange creatures such as the Bacolta and apex predators like the Verarella. In the next episode, we will explore the unique life that has evolved in the Dufogile and Atafogile forests. A huge thank you to all the artists on Discord who made fan art for this episode. Your contributions to this project are invaluable. If you want to join the Discord server, you can find the link in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts on these incredible creatures. See you in the next episode.